Energy Coaching. My colleague Andrew Woods is with me today. Um, and um, as I said to all of you, if you'd like to, perhaps come in nearer the middle because you know, we can all be friends and, and see each other. Um, that doesn't mean you have to go, but you know, that's why I just to go together. Because this is a session about teams. So what we're about really is people. I'm working with people in an age of disruption and an age of difficulty. And they have gone written and talked on the subject. Uh, as recently as this week, Deloitte, uh, management consultancy, uh, produced a very comprehensive report which came up with some quite startling conclusions. Not only is the, is the era of the individual, the era of the team is ended. The era of the straight functional team is ended and will be replaced by groups of project teams. And even they won't be fluid. They'll be very fluid. You will start to work and move to something else. You may change three or four times in a year. So whatever business you're in, whatever sector you're in, whatever department you're in, whatever job you hold or don't hold, it is going to change. So the amount of change that's necessary in the world will have to be reflected by the change in you and the teams you work in. So to survive in an age of disruption, Flexibility and adaptability is going to be important. And so I'm going to talk about that in terms of the adaptability quotient. Rather than do a sales pitch though, I'd rather like to take you through where we see the world. I don't know how many of you have heard of the phrase VUCA. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. Originally came from the military men in the United States as to how they would deal with the world after the Cold War. Because suddenly, there wasn't just the Russians and us. There were a whole different level of challenges in the geopolitical world which we face. It's the very same in terms of business. Online versus offline. Fifty years ago, we were talking about online versus offline. You talk to somebody who's in their mid-twenties and they ask you, what's offline? What's that all about? I, I, I watch television, I've got a Netflix account. So it's me, like, you know, that's what my dad and mom watch. Well, it's that. And if I really want to watch, like, a Project Free TV, and I'll download it. So suddenly the challenges in every single situation by mass digitization, disruption, and instability is transforming your world. And it will transform your business. And it will transform your teams. Whether you have a, a small company, whether you are a large company, whether you're in a classroom, it doesn't matter. It will change. So the organization will have to become fluid and adaptive. Now, if you follow this very anyway closely, that won't be seen to be unusual, because it's probably about that. What we're talking about is exactly what to do with it. So the strategy becomes fluid. The idea of writing a plan at the beginning of the year is our business plan for the year, which is going to take us through the ups and downs of life. That's also gone. Strategy may have to be concluded not only yearly or quarterly or monthly, but potentially daily, because the world is changing that way. And the key to successful change isn't strategy, it isn't process, it isn't products, it is put simply people. Right? Because if you have the right people, then the challenges that you face become almost, almost completely solved. If you have an adaptable workforce, creativity, motivated, looking at their potential, being prepared to be different, and in some cases, actually wanting to be different, and pushing you to be different, then that's the kind of workforce that's going to be given. So many people around this hall today have offered me new technologies, so I've been here in the morning. New ways of paying things, new ways of buying things, new ways of getting. And that's really important because it's using innovation. But the problem it solves is not a technology, it's a business problem. And that's the one you have to solve. It doesn't matter what system or server you put in there, you have to sell things, make money, and get people to deliver those services, regardless of what it is. And that innovation. 
connection requires people, and that requires connections. One of the things we do is that we are the sole distributors in Ireland, North and South, for the Belden Team Roads. A methodology many of you may be aware of, which was first founded in the 60s by Meredith Belden uh, in the Henley Business School. And his view was that there were different types of people in the world. Nine, to be precise. Now, unlike other tools, they don't just say, hello, you are you, are this, you're that. You're not. You're a combination of all of them. There are parts of you that are all of them. And the combination of those in a team environment will get you what's really good. Very quickly, the nine team roles, for those of you who don't know them. Plant is the creative ideas generating person. Loads of ideas, prolific, wonderful. Some of them great, some of them awful, dreadful. Right? Comes up with the good ideas, that's the strength. The downside, maybe terrible ideas. And is so concerned with the ideas that doesn't think about implementing them. So the implementation is gone. I've got this new idea, this is a fact. So the results investigate. The outgoing communicative type who tries to bring people together. Good sales and marketing people. It's all about making the contacts of the people. They love shows like this where they can go around and meet dozens of people in a day. I should know I'm one of them, right? The drawback is, if after two or three months they're talking to you and they're getting nowhere, it's sayonara. They're moving on. Fresh meat, please. Thanks. Okay? Imagine them on first day tired. They like me. So, that's the kind of scenario that it was also best to get The third one is the coordinator or conductor brings people together. A vital part of the team because bringing people together and keeping them on the right track is essential in our life. The downside of that is they can be seen to be the difference. The job they don't want to do, they get somebody else to do it all the time. The fourth is the shaper. I suppose the traditional role of the leader, the driven, driven man or woman who wants to get there in their way. We all know what. So their strengths are that they get things done, entrepreneurial vision. Their weaknesses are that they don't care. It's about the result. As I say, often the end justifies the means. So streams of people dissatisfied because this person is just looking at the end. Great strengths in that, but some weaknesses. The monitor evaluator is the next step. So seen by the eye. This is a person who can look at things objectively. They have an inbuilt immunity to enthusiasm and an inbuilt bullshit to think. Because they look at things and say, why? I don't think so. I'm skeptical. They can really irritate other members of the team because they're infuriating me inconsistent ability to just mention the facts and truth can get in the way of the exciting things that the team would like to do. But if you don't have someone like that in your team, then you are doomed to fail. And think about new businesses and startups you know that have failed. And maybe we're in them. I don't know. But ask yourself, was it perhaps the drive of the individual or the entrepreneur or the idea generator that wasn't seen through, and consequently, the business didn't succeed. A monitor evaluator there to think and to look through opportunities will really make a difference. The team worker is the person who is cooperative, perceptive, diplomatic, brings people together, the glue that makes people. This is a person whose role is often misunderstood. That person who spreads love, spreads affection. Are you all right? Is everything okay? Okay. That's their strength. Their weakness, they tend to avoid conflict. They tend to avert friction. They tend to avoid making a decision that's going to potentially have you consequences. The implementer is the get the job done person. It doesn't matter. It's getting done. If I'm told to put it in the yellow box, Put it in the yellow box, not the red box, not the green box, even if it's a better box, it's the yellow box, because that's what I'm told. And the joke we have about these people is 
To err is human. To forgive is against company policy. They are inflexible. It is, it is their weakness. The completer finisher, again, something very important to take. This person, to the extent of compulsion, is compulsively driven to finish everything to the highest possible standard. It doesn't matter how long it takes, they will get the final note of both. And finally, there is a specialist who tends to contribute on things on a specific rather than a general purpose. So, quick introduction about them, excuse the commercial. But those types of people are in your business. And sadly, you are there too. Maybe you recognize yourself. But that's what you've got. Now match your functional ability with your behavioral strengths and weaknesses. And you now have a powerful first step of the two. Awareness of your team. You then take that into the way that the team thinks, acts, and feels. Or as we call it, hand, head, and heart. So if you have a team that is very social, they meet with their heart, they talk a lot, they have consensus, they're very nice to each other, there tends to be no conflict, and sometimes they have a lack of action. And the same with the other two. The all action oriented team can forget about new ideas. Yeah, the people that are so wrapped up in those new ideas sometimes don't have the feel of that. But then there's plenty of room, plenty of room. So those 19 roles become the start of your journey of innovation because what they will do is they'll tell you about yourself and your team. And only then, I argue, can you begin to start making the changes that are necessary in an organization to make yourself truly adaptable. And innovation relies upon that. What we're saying is that once you've got this, you can't stop them. You've got to keep experimenting and adapting and trying new things all the time. It's not any longer about doing something and being happy. So it's about engaging with the individuals, analyzing what they do, trying new ideas, some of which you know will fail. And that's fine. Failure is okay, because you don't learn this effect. And then developing a plan. And what it's about is turning it into a deep journey about the transformation you need to go through. I said the change is inevitable and it is. But it's not quick. To get a team from a situation where they really are thinking in a totally different way can require six months. And if you put the time and effort into that six months, then you will, you will reap. So we have a service called Innovation Adaptation Quotient, which is a two-day course that takes Melbourne. It starts with the team, it starts with the introduction to the team, and then it puts them through what we call the Adaptability Quotient. We have colleagues in White and Juto. Uh, you may have heard their speech about an hour ago on this stage. They're in uh, stand number 88. Well worth going to see them. We're pioneering with them to do these yourself and your own emergency and what you end up doing. And we want to talk to Irish businesses. The size of it makes no difference. It can be a two or three person group in a shed or it can be a five thousand. Regardless of what it is, it is an interesting one. There's a team of experts we have here, Andrew Woods and a few others. I'll come back to that. Any questions? This is where your strengths are. 
What do you think that means for your weaknesses? And you would get them to actually start to unpack it. Because we're not about consulting and pointing fingers around and saying, okay, right, let's take it through. Be honest with yourselves, okay? Is getting things done an issue? And can I be honest? It's one of my issues. Right? So, one of the things you have to do, he will tell you that. He's not, he's not, he's not innocent himself. So, one of the things that's necessary is maybe somebody else in the team would be brilliant at administrating and finishing things. And that's necessary. You may have to hire. You may have to take somebody from another department. You may have to set that. But whatever you decide to do, you're now making decisions based upon a real understanding of the behavior of the strengths. Whereas previously you were making decisions based on the sales department, the engineering department, the operations department, the agency department, the urban boring, the accounts department, whatever it's going to be. So you're suddenly making three different decisions. So the person who is in that can be very useful, say, the analytical person in the sales group can be brilliant for the market research to sort out your needs. Any other questions at all or comments? Hi. I'm going to repeat the question. What do you do when you have somebody who's very powerful? So, we're looking at the team role that we call the shaper. This is the person who drives everybody crazy, but also can drive results. And how, and your second point was, what do you do if, that, if you're not that person? Because obviously if you are that person, that's great. And how do you influence, or how do you get them to see their plans? Okay, I go back to the first question that I get to clear. First of all, you have to cook. If we assume that the person who is leading the team is brave enough in, in the first sense to submit their team to some kind of development and training, that's the first step. That's the very first step. If they're prepared to say, yes, these are the roles we all have, and this is mine, I am shaping. They're probably quite proud of it, because shapers normally are. Yep, this is my business, I bought it up for nothing. It would be nothing without me. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Then that's the first thing. Okay. You first engage with their strengths and their form. And then you engage with their weaknesses. A technique is often privately marked. Those things that are weak for you must really be attention. Don't do And privately, because it's normally best in this part. Secondly, handle it in a team environment. What we often do is put the team profiles up and the, the boss will see straight away, ah, here I am, here they are. And we say something like, to make this team more effective, a lot of people have to understand the way the leader is driven and how they're pitching themselves and how they're getting results. But what I have to do understand that my way is not the only and that I'm going to have a stronger better team and better business results if I take other people's views. Often in a situation, if this is a practical one or one you know of, it's a question of finding two or three people who can personally trust us, going to them and saying, we can't confront this directly, we need to go around it. So this is a neutral way of giving these team roles out attacking everybody's strengths and weaknesses. After all, if all the team members have been assessed and they've all had the profiles, and they're all the same diplomatic team workers, you're going to have to begin as well. And that could be the opening for understanding. If the person is so entrenched in their ways and won't give in, then my second suggestion is try some form of coaching. Try a professional coach. Try and persuade that person. That person's family 
that this is necessary, and a small amount of coaching can help them see. For the shaper, it's about seeing that the strength they have and the weaknesses they have are just reverse sides of the same coin. So if that person puts their weaknesses to work, you can turn those weaknesses into strength. And ultimately, that person will not be able to deliver on this next year. So the micro areas and the rich advances and the people we all see as the big driving chamber people. The truth is, and I've worked with some of them, the truth is that they're nothing of that And most of them are honest enough to admit that. Okay, Jeff. Any other questions on anything? Um, can I ask you a question back? Is this striking? What kind of issues are you facing out there? Anybody got any comments on this that they want to? Any comments they want to make about this or similar type of issues? Does this strike a chord at all? Yeah? I go to Tina again. Thank you. What do we do for our academic environments? I'm glad you said that. And Mark, please pull me up when I talk too much. Mark. And we also have a development project for four other groups. The first is school students 15 to 17, called Get Set. The second is the universities. You see this gentleman here from the University of Liverpool, who are already a customer of our UK brand. And the second is university students who are in careers and re launching their first program. And in that, we also have a package for lecturers. And we'll come and, and, and talk. And if that, what we've negotiated at the moment is a very reasonable thing with the issue of universities that are on budget. So what we have is negotiated a really, really cost effective way of bringing this to people. But we also have it for small businesses, medium sized businesses, and also charity. One final thing that maybe will tickle your fancy. Meredith Bell is the person behind this, and some of you may know them if you're in the is 19 in September for Bobby House to his party in Cambridge, which will be a fun filled evening for the intellectual forum that I'm sure you There won't be much group taken there necessarily. But anyway, his wife sadly died in 60. Very sad. And he decided to find his next wife even though. And as it happens, at the conference last year, I happened to be sitting beside a white woman. And within about two minutes, I could see that this is what I was about to Because this guy is a scanning professor type, loves a wonderful idea, all over the world. And this is a key Dare I suggest that there are other men in the room who probably know that feeling kind of like But nevertheless, that's the kind of situation. So if you take this, the answer to your question is, you can apply it anyway. Um, this is true, it's, it's been a depression, so uh, we did go in with Joe Schmidt. Certainly, sadly it was before the World Cup, so I don't know if that, if that performance is into that. And we have worked with the FAI as well, so we work with sporting teams as well. Okay. The final thing I'd say, without being over commercial, though everybody is here, so why not just get it? Is a lot of people think that these tools and techniques are phenomenally expensive and are well beyond the price. People say, but that's going to cost me thousands. It's not even going to cost you one. So it's well worth looking for an individual.